Hey guys, this video is going to be uh, the same format as the last video. Um, I recorded these videos over a period of a uh, couple weeks. Um, just the way things went, uh, harvest is a very fast paced, uh, all hands on deck kind of a time. And um, just didn't get the, the shots I wanted, but uh, I got what I got. So. Hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the video. Um, like I said, harvest uh, in this video was over a two week period. Um, not the way I would have had it, but I had a lot of difficulties. Uh, when I started out, it was 21% moisture. Um, by the end, it was 17 and a half. So if I would have known that it was gonna dry down like that, um, I would have waited but it's a chance you take. You don't know what the weather's gonna be like. I wanted to get uh, the ridges knocked down and uh, corn stalks incorporated and drill my cereal rye. So, um, so I, I tried drying the corn uh, at 21%. Uh, you'll see in the video, got it too dry. So, but uh, that's just the way things went. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit the like button. Hey guys, we finished up with our conventional corn and soybeans and all of our custom work um, a couple days ago. So we're cleaning out the combine now, getting ready for organic corn. It's a lot, a lot to get done, a lot to do, lots of places where a lot of corn and soybeans hiding. Got to blow combine all off and get everything ready. I started on the corn head yesterday, got it all blown off and power washed so it's all clean. Nothing in the auger bed. All the gathering chains and stock rolls are all clean, so it's ready for organic corn. Need to get the rest of the stuff cleaned up, so I'm going to show you that today. All the shields and everything have to come off so we can blow everything out, get it all clean. Rock trap underneath. All the elevators have to take the doors off the rotor compartment. All that has to get cleaned. Tailings elevator, clean grain elevator. Got the pan dropped underneath that. It's a pretty big job. screwdriver I've been working all afternoon on this um, not quite done yet but getting close still got to back out the auger beds here underneath the rotor concaves so this is where all the threshing happens there are threshing elements in there that spin around and force the corn 
around on these well corn and soybeans wheat um, all crops I guess around on these round bar concaves and it just forces them off forces the kernels off Then back here, there are tines. You can see one right there. There's one right there. They spin around after it goes over the concaves. It'll come back here and do the final threshing before it goes out the back. The grain will drop down on these pans, which are moving back and forth. It'll come over here onto this pre-cleaner. It'll go down there onto the sieves. This fan here will be blowing air up through all of that and all the chaff just floats out the back and the grain falls down underneath. Here's a little bit better picture. Um, the sieves, there are two sieves. This is the top one, and then there's one underneath this. And the chaff will float over these. And then right here's the chopper. It'll get chopped up and thrown out. Then here's the back side of the chopper. And then it'll get thrown out the tailboard here. This is just the other side. Same thing. On this side though, you have tailings elevator, which this is for if you have the bottom sieve closed too much and the top sieve's open enough, it can actually get in between that. This is the auger that's between those two sieves and anything that's unthreshed will get recirculated back into the rotor again. Clean grain elevator. Is on the bottom of those sieves whether you can see up in there and all the clean grain gets taken up the elevator up to the grain tank up here in the grain tank this is the top of that clean grain elevator it'll throw the grain against this plate which that records the yield data, how much bushel per acre we're getting. And then this auger is usually up. So then this will fill the grain tank up here. There are usually covers on these augers. I took them off to clean everything, but these augers will move the grain out of the grain tank to a vertical auger under here. That vertical auger is this right here that I was cleaning out earlier. And it will take it up and then out the unloading auger, which that swings out. So all that stuff has to get cleaned. Every kernel has to get cleaned out of it, if I can. It's a pretty hard job to get every kernel out, but I'm going to try. Definitely uh, helps my premium if I don't get a load rejected. Because if they do find GMO crops 
inorganic crops, they'll reject it. Morning guys, been working on the combine this morning, a little bit more. I think I about got it. Got the shoe augers, they're all clean. Sieves are all clean, everything. I cleaned yesterday. I just touched up, finished up, and I think it's good to go now. I do want to power wash the inside of the grain tank just because there's a lot of stuff that's kind of stuck on the sides, and I'd really like to just get that clean. Dad just pulled the grain cart in the shop now, and we'll clean that out. Hey guys, shelling organic corn today doing pretty good. Uh, the monitor's showing about 172. So that's pretty good for my first year. I'm, I'm really happy with that. I would have liked to have had a little drier, but I need to plan an earlier uh, day variety next year. I planned 105 day corn this year. Uh, I think I'll probably plant like a 90 Seven, 96 day something like that uh, get it to mature a little quicker and dry down a little faster this corn will hopefully be food grade uh, we're doing everything we can to uh, make sure that it's in uh, spec with grain millers out of Marion Indiana I'm sure most of you have probably watched my channel intro video. Uh, in that video, I talked about how I wanted to be real and show when things didn't go according to plan. In that bin is 10% corn, which spec on food grade corn is 14.5%. That's a screw up that just happened. I uh, wasn't watching it and it over dried. That bin does not have a stirrator in it, and um, the heat, we've got a burner on the fan, and the heat um, dries the bottom first, obviously as heat rises, and it got the, the bottom super dry. The top was about 13 and a half before I caught it. Um, so what we're doing, we're taking corn out of this bin, mixing it half and half with the truck and taking it to another bin and then uh, we'll just use a spreader um, that's in the top of the bin and hopefully it gets it spread uh, evenly and hopefully the moisture should work out that way so um, yeah it was just just one thing I wanted to show you that not everything goes according to plan and just wanted to make sure that I added it to the video. 
So here's the fan and the burner set up. Uh, I had the thermostat set about 70 degrees or so, but like I said, it just over dried it and I wasn't paying attention, wasn't watching it. The corn that's in this bin was shelled about a week ago. Um, I didn't get any video footage of shelling corn then. Um, what we were shelling today and yesterday um, is the stuff that we're mixing with this. But it's really not too bad. Um, it's just, just too dry. There used to be a stirrator in this bin, but it does not have one now. Um, stirrator has augers that come down through the center and it goes around on that track that's up there and then it, it just goes well, it goes around the track and then it also goes through the center and just stirs this whole bin um, never actually used one so we were just hoping that we could get this corn um, not too dry on the bottom but yet dry enough on the top and it just did not work like we thought hey guys uh it's been a couple days since uh shelled corn last uh we should get it done today we're gonna put the rest of this field in the bin uh that we pulled all that other dry corn out uh, we got it all mixed put it in a separate bin so it should be good uh, tested the moisture on it after we mixed it it was running about that 14 anywhere from 13 and a half to 15 somewhere in there we're going to keep some air on it so it should be good um, and then the rest of this corn we'll put in the bin and i'm going to watch it better this time uh, we shouldn't have to use any heat on it should just be able to air dry it uh, but we'll see we'll keep taking samples and go from there so we should be able to get this corn finished today and I'd like to get my cereal rye seeded on this um, still need to work the ridges down before I drill that though so I don't have my high-speed disc yet so we'll see what we come up with and uh, how we work this down so Elevator blight. That's what happens when you run over corn and cover it up. I don't know who did that. Since we finished up the organic corn yesterday, I'm uh, out here disking the corn stalks now. I usually don't like to do tillage in the fall just because not a big fan um, leaving the soil uncovered and you know erosion stuff like that wind erosion water erosion um, but I do have to get these ridges worked down um, but I will be coming right back in with cereal rye and planting that so um, hopefully that gets sprouted and it'll grow and should have good um, good cover over winter, hopefully. Um, I know it'll come up in the spring, just kind of worried about it uh, before it gets too late. I'm not going real deep, just deep enough to take out uh, the winter annual weeds that came up and knock down the ridges. So maybe three inches, kind of where I have it set. I'll show you some of the winter annual weeds that are coming up here and uh, how high the ridges are. So you got these winter annual weeds here. They're not too much of a threat. Um, I don't know what they're going to be like in the spring. So I want to make sure I get these killed. and. You know, there's about, you know, there's probably four inches here 
between the top of here and the bottom. I really just want to level that all out uh, and make a good seed bed for the cereal rye. Might have to end up working this twice to get a good seed bed. Again, my uh, high speed disc uh, has not come yet, but uh, that's okay. We'll use the disc that we got and go from there.